stalks and drill bits blossoming from them like fungi. It finds one. Sylvia, I think. Little mousy thing, trembling and all but silent, until they go to work on her. Then, please in German and fractured English, promises, promises, everything from love to her own slavery, silenced only by her meat and blood, by whatever they force down her stretched wide throat. What's left? A butcher's sculpture, a shapeless mass of ragged deep red meat, the only sustenance, all we have. The fingers of the hungriest, those driven almost mad with starvation, burrowing deep, tearing away strips and knots, sobbing, gagging as they eat. The butcher helps, hacking at her, squealing delight, feeding them what it carves away with parental delicacy, cooing its encouragement as they draw closer. Naked children, grateful for this moment of love amidst the tempest of abuse. The other two, more considered, more delicate in their work, drifting through the squalid, the strung up, the naked, the flayed, the slit and suspended, those nailed to the walls, impaled on pulsing engines, the cowering, the muttering, the mutilated, all still living, impossible though it seems. Delicate caresses but more than enough to set them clamouring, those still capable of doing so. Those that can't, silently suffering, shivering in their chains, on their spits and spikes. They see, they know. My friend, screaming at their attention, begging them, pleading with them to make him the same, to set him up amongst the others, to cut me out. No. Oh no, sweetheart. Not the same. The butcher finds us first, staggering away from Sylvia, heaving, unsteadied by its exertions, eyes gleaming behind its mask, the eyes of one in love. I feel it, the affection, the lust. I've seen what stirs at its crotch at work already, a flower of flesh and fracture metal, of dog's teeth, of drill bits, the trauma it can wreak on its lovers from outside and in. The other two, the surgeons, too lost in their work, otherwise they might have warned it away until they've had a chance to taste for themselves. Christ, the stink of it, enough to turn my friend's stomach, not me. It's a child. An adolescent, rank with the racing of its own hormones, idiot attempts at seduction, so ridiculous, so naive. I look up, staring into its eyes, at the mouth behind the mask, lips peeled back and pinned, teeth permanently exposed, a tongue protruding, elaborately scarred and pierced, licking over the leather. Grunts, a pig, scenting truffles. Its butcher's blade falls, its fused together fist tearing open like a placental sack, something flowering before its term, the instrument clattering to the gore encrusted grating. An instant, a heartbeat. The blade in our hands, the thing so still as though awaiting us, inviting our violence. Only he screams, my friend, buried deep. Barely a grunt as its bloated belly parts cleaved like butter, the serrated blade carving down and across, making a flower of it. It staggers back, 
the blade tearing free, clutching, staring down at itself as it spills. Black tar, octopus ink, what slopes from inside, knotting and writhing, entrails of great pale worms, of pulsing, bug-bodied mollusks, married to whirring machinery, devices grafted in place of what its makers tore out.